I'm Gwyneth Price Panos. This is a fast-paced, high-level overview of how I created two old-age makeup looks. The first I'm calling a healthy, happy grandma, and the other is a more haggard old lady with more sun damage and liver spots. If you have absolutely no experience with makeup, you might feel overwhelmed by the instructions I'm throwing at you, but have no fear. There are more tutorials coming soon where I explain the techniques I'm using in more depth. If you get confused, don't stress and just enjoy the transformation. I wash and moisturize using Mary Kay Clean and Clear. Then I apply the Bobbi Brown Skin Foundation Stick in Cool Ivory. The contour colors I'm using are by Makeup Designery, Shade 1, Shade 3, and Light. I'm starting with Shade 1, which is a slightly lighter and warmer color than Shade 3. I contour under my cheekbones, along the temples, on my forehead following the curve of the frontal bone, and in the ridge of my chin. The goal is to make sunken in areas of my face more sunken in to emulate what happens to skin as you age. Now I'm highlighting the areas I want to protrude outward with my highlight color, which is called light. This is not a pure white color, it's off-white. I use this color to create the illusion of sagging skin along my jawline and paint small triangles by my chin to make jowls. I'm now going in with shade 3 to create even more depth in areas that are looking too one-dimensional to me. In case you're wondering, this is not the highlight and shadow contour palette that comes pre-filled by Makeup Designery. I bought this palette from them empty and filled it with my favorite mud colors for personal use. If you have a darker complexion than me, you would use mud's darker shading colors, like shade 4 or 5. And for your highlight, you'd use orange light, which has more warmth in it than what I'm using. I'm now creating nasal labial folds using shades 3 and light. I like to use angle brushes for detail work like this, but no matter what type of brush you choose to use, it's important to use two different brushes, one for the shadow color and one for the highlight, to prevent them from mixing together. In today's demo, I'm using MAC brush number 266 and MUD brush number 210. The technique I used for the nasal labial folds is the same one I'm using now for my under eye circles and soon for the wrinkles as well. The darkest and lightest area of the crease meet in the middle making a sharp line. This is called the hard edge. The colors are then diffused out creating what is called the soft edge. I start by painting a shadow line, then I wipe excess product off the brush on a paper towel and blend the shadow color upwards. Then I use the second brush to paint the highlight line below the shadow line so that they're touching but not overlapping. Wipe off that brush and blend the light color down. I create these wrinkles following the patterns already on my face. If I can't find the wrinkles, I scrunch up my face so I can see where they could be in the future. If you're blessed enough to truly not have anything to follow, then use your best judgment by copying a photo of an older person with similar features to you, maybe a grandparent. Now I'm contouring my nose. As you age, your nose gets larger and more bony, so I'm emphasizing the angles in my nose with this color placement. For a beauty makeup, I'd want it to appear smoother and straighter. I'm adding highlights to the bags under my eyes to make them more puffy. Then I decide to round the bottom of my nasal labial folds because I think it looks more droopy and soft this way. Then I apply the cream highlight color to my eyebrows with a concealer brush. You can also use hair makeup to white out your eyebrows and temples, but cream makeup works too. I use one of my favorite powder puffs from Cinema Secrets and a generous amount of RCMA No Color Powder to set the cream makeup in place. I apply shade 3 to my lips, powder them, pucker my lips and apply the highlight. 
then powder again. This creates wrinkles on my lips. If your neck and chest are visible in your costume, it's important to apply makeup there too. I contour around the muscles in my neck and in the hollow of my sternum using a disposable sponge and shade one. I highlight where the muscles protrude with the highlighter color on a concealer brush. Then I go in with horizontal wrinkles using shades three and light with my angled brushes using the soft edge and hard edge techniques I talked about earlier. I put on my wig cap and apply brown eyeliner along my bottom lash line so my eyes are more visible to the audience without being over dramatic. Then I put on my wig. This is my first old age look, what I'm calling the happy healthy grandma. Now I'm going to apply age spots and sun damage to give me a more haggard look. I started with my stipple sponge and now have moved on to using an eyeshadow brush in a dabbing motion. I didn't feel there was enough contrast with the contouring using my mud palette, so I decided to use my Makeup Forever Flash Color Palette, the brown and black, mixing the two when I felt necessary. I apply the colors in what appears to be a random pattern, but I'm going along my forehead, cheekbones, and nose where the sun would hit my skin the most as I age. The more details I add to my face, the less noticeable my wrinkles are, so I go back in with a darker brown in the darkest part of the crease of the wrinkles to give them more depth. The not so beautiful beauty mark was made with a mixture of black and brown and applied with a fine point brush. I'm using that same fine point brush to have a lot more control with the detail work in the wrinkles. I'm contouring around my chin to make it look a little more pointy by adding more shadows in an angular shape. I use my stipple sponge with the red color to give me broken capillaries. The Makeup Forever Red is very strong, so I go over it again with some foundation on the stipple sponge to break it up some more. I'm going back in with my highlights as well to continue adding more depth until I feel the look is complete. And here's my second completed look. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to learn more about theatrical makeup and wigs, or you just have fun watching me be silly on camera, subscribe to my channel. I'll see you next time.